And we are back with our GMA cover story, a health alert about blue light and its impact on sleep. A new article in the New York Times takes a look at the risks, and our medical correspondent, Dr. Darren Not Sutton, is here to explain. So Common Sense tells us, put away your phones before bedtime. But what does the research say? Oh, that is what Common Sense is. Common Sense says. But there's no doubt that blue light has become a household term. I've even been convinced to buy blue light filters in my glasses. And the idea comes from the fact, or the, the concept, that blue light, which is the wavelength of light that is emitted from our phones, our tablets, and our screens, disrupts our sleep. Now, although that idea is sound, the, the data behind it, George, is still mixed and the most recent high quality review comes from the National Sleep Foundation, a panel of experts, leading clinicians and scientists to review high quality data to date. And the overall clear founding conclusion was that for teens and adolescents, uh, screen time during uh, bedtime was more harmful in terms of the sleep quality to teens and adolescents than it was to adults. Now what wasn't clear is, is that because of the blue light? Is that because of the content that's on the screen or even the distance that that screen is at? What does it say about how we're using these devices with blue Blue light. Yeah, well, there are some practical takeaways that you can gain from understanding from the smaller studies. It says that when we hold blue light up close to our face, that is associated with the suppression of melatonin. That's our sleep hormone, and that's one of the reasons why bright screens up close at the end of night can disrupt our sleep. We also know that content is a factor here. Uh, reading emails that are stressful, watching binge-worthy TV shows, even though it might not feel stressful, your brain is still interpreting that information, and George, that can be releasing hormones that keeps you awake. So bottom line, if if you want to get a good night's sleep, what, you, what should you know about blue light? Bottom line is structure, especially for children and adolescents from the studies that we've known and that we understand. When, when children don't have good structural sleep in their early life, that increases their risk of problems with brain development, that it can also increase their risk of anxiety and depression. So there are some steps that we all should take when trying to manage that. Number one, measure. You can't change something you don't measure, so you want to understand how much screen time you're using. You also want to make sure to keep that screen at an appropriate distance. We do know that the farther the distance, the less likely that it's going to disrupt your sleep. And then wind down, uh, making sure that you're using that time before bed, 30 to 60 minutes, that can be stretching or meditation, whatever you find might be helpful. And if you have to use a screen, you wanna use light entertainment. You wanna avoid things that are stressful, focusing on a show that you know the ending to, or even a meditation <laughs> app. And most importantly, making sure that you're keeping it consistent because your body doesn't know the difference between weekday and weekend. You're just making me think my daughters, they watch comfort food sitcoms before they go to bed on their phone. And that's a great tactic. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you very much.